So what living things do is they take in oxygen and those hydrogen atoms that are being released from breaking apart the sugar molecule are then transferred to the oxygen atoms. A very important coenzyme involved in the transfer of these hydrogen atoms onto oxygen is a coenzyme called NAD. <clears throat> now, technically NAD stands for nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide, but everybody calls it NAD. And it transfers hydrogen atoms two at a time. It transfers hydrogen atoms and electrons two at a time from the sugar molecule ultimately to oxygen. And of course, if you transfer hydrogen atoms onto oxygen atoms, what do you end up with? That's right, you end up with H2O, with water. So, there is a name for this process of transferring hydrogen atoms and electrons from one molecule to another molecule. These types of chemical reactions are called oxidation-reduction chemical reactions. Whenever a molecule loses hydrogen atoms and electrons, we say that it has become oxidized. So we would say that glucose, since hydrogen atoms are being removed from this sugar molecule, we would say glucose is oxidized. It is oxidized into carbon dioxide. Just remember OIL. What is OIL? Oxidation is a loss of hydrogen atoms and electrons. Now whenever one molecule is giving away hydrogen atoms and electrons, somebody else is gaining them. They went somewhere. So who gained the hydrogen atoms and electrons? Oxygen. So there's a chemical name for this. We would say that oxygen, oxygen is chemically reduced. It is chemically reduced into water. Now this term reduced has nothing to do with losing weight. It is a special technical term and it refers to the gaining of hydrogen atoms and electrons by a molecule. To remember it, just remember R-I-G. Chemical reduction is a gain in hydrogen atoms and electrons. So, Who's losing hydrogen atoms and electrons? The sugar molecule, the glucose. Who's gaining these hydrogen atoms? Oxygen. And as it gains these hydrogen atoms and electrons, it's being turned into water. Think of oxidation as a loss of these hydrogen atoms and electrons. Reduction is a gain in these hydrogen atoms and electrons. Or the expression oil rig. <clears throat> now, so we now have explained the role of oxygen. The reason why you are inhaling oxygen every moment is so that the cells, as they break apart foods such as sugars, in order to release energy and use that energy to make ATP, uh, the hydrogen atoms that are released from breaking apart the sugar have to be attached to oxygen and turned into water. That's how the cell gets rid of these hydrogen atoms. So we see that the role of oxygen is that it acts as a hydrogen acceptor. It accepts the hydrogen atoms as the sugar is broken apart. That's the reason why you're inhaling oxygen. So in this process of cellular respiration, we see that in order to, make, to release energy to make ATP, you must have foods such as sugars. Without those foods, you will die because you can't make ATP to keep all the biochemical reactions going in the cells of your body. But even if you had all the food in the world, you need one other thing. You need oxygen because as, in order to break apart the foods, and uh, the hydrogen atoms that are released have to be disposed of somehow so that they don't kill the cell by increasing the acidity. And those hydrogen atoms are attached to oxygen, the oxygen that you inhale, and that forms water. When you exhale, you are exhaling carbon dioxide out your mouth. That is a waste product formed from breaking apart sugars and other foods in order to release energy. Now, we said that the energy that is released uh, is going to be used to make ATP. In fact, the energy that is released from breaking apart glucose is enough energy to produce 38 molecules of ATP. <clears throat> 38 molecules of ATP. 
But that only accounts for about 40% of the energy that was released from breaking apart the sugar. What happened to the remaining 60% of the energy? It was released as heat. That heat accounts for the remaining 60%, more than half of the energy that was released from breaking apart the sugar was released in the form of heat. So let's summarize why this is such a profoundly important uh, statement about living things and, and, and the cellular respiration process. It states that in, we all living things must produce ATP because those are the quarters that run all the machinery in the cells of your body. Just like quarters are used to, in a laundromat, ATPs provide the energy, the fuel for all chemical reactions in living things. But how do you get these quarters? How do you get the ATP? You produce the ATP by breaking apart foods such as sugars and fats. As they are broken apart step by step by step, ultimately into carbon dioxide, the hydrogen atoms are removed from these organic compounds like sugars and transferred to oxygen to form water. And as the energy is released, more, most of the energy, more than half, goes off as heat. So, let's imagine you wanted to start to run, to exercise. In order to make your muscle cells contract, in order to make them work harder, they need, what do they need? ATP. That's the fuel, that source of energy that powers your muscle cells. So in order for you to exercise, your muscle cells start breaking apart sugars at a faster rate. And you start inhaling oxygen at a faster rate so that the hydrogen atoms that are released from breaking apart the sugars can be attached to the oxygens to form water. You start not only inhaling oxygen at a faster rate, but you start exhaling carbon dioxide at a faster rate, which is a waste product form from the breakdown of sugars. And a third thing that happens is you start getting hot. The reason why you start getting hot is because over half of the energy that is released from breaking apart sugars in order to make ATP, more than half of that energy is released in the form of heat. And that's why you start sweating, you start perspiring, which is a cooling mechanism to prevent you for your body from overheating from this release of heat in this process of cellular respiration. Now, this process of cellular respiration doesn't occur in a single reaction. It re it, the sugars are broken apart step by step by step. It cannot be broke, sugars cannot be broken apart in one single reaction because it would result in an explosive release of energy. So by breaking apart the sugar first in half, then each of those halves are broken in half, step by step, there is a controlled release of energy, and this controlled release of energy is being used to make ATP. Each of these steps is catalyzed by a different enzyme. Enzymes are proteins that cause biochemical reactions to occur. And if, since there are many steps, there are many enzymes involved in this overall process. Coenzymes, which you know better as vitamins and minerals, are also involved in this cellular respiration process. The term coenzyme is, is appropriate. If coenzymes assist enzymes in catalyzing and causing these chemical reactions to occur very similarly to the way a co-pilot assists a pilot in flying an airplane. One of the most important of these coenzymes is this NAD, nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide, which in reality is the B vitamin niacin. Niacin is an important vitamin or organic coenzyme in the cellular respiration process and its specific role is to transfer hydrogen atoms and electrons from the sugar molecule to oxygen.